Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos. Okay, so Silvia Vazquez Lovato was the first Peruvian woman to summit Mount Everest, and she's the first openly gay woman to complete the seven summits, which is a challenge to climb the highest mountain on each continent. There's a brand new memoir that she's just put out. It's called In the Shadow of the Mountain, and she is opening up about that journey, but so much more, talking about sexuality, abuse, addiction, and I really think that so many of you will get so much out of this story and I'm so excited to be chatting with Sylvia right now. How are you, Sylvia? Anthony, it is an honor. You know, as I had mentioned, I've been to many of the GLAAD galas. I mean, and the work that GLAAD has been doing, I mean, for decades, it, it was always, I, I remember just watching it from afar, like, wow, in, in all. So this is, you know, to say kind of my gay dream come true. It's amazing. Oh, well, no, that is so sweet. And like I said, we will, we would love to have you back at the Lab Media Awards, which will be April 2nd in, Be in uh, Beverly Hills and then New York City on May 6th. Um, more on that later, but congratulations. So this book has just come out a couple weeks ago, very personal. Um, you have opened up so much, so much more than just about your climbing of the mountains. It's climbing mountains in your personal life and accomplishing so much. How are you feeling now that the book is out and the world really is just responding to it so um, so warmly. Well, Anthony, it is an honor. I am thrilled to finally have the book out. As you said, you know, I put everything on the page. It was important for me not to, you know, shy away, not to hide anything, especially for for me, you know, as a gay woman and, and within our community, LGBTQIA plus, we constantly have so much fear, judgment, you know, repression. And this was the opportunity for me to be as open, as honest, as vulnerable, because that's part of, you know, to me, you know, my community, that's how we walk our talk, that's, that's how we've made change. And so it was really important to bring this powerful story in a way that, you know, we can take shame and secrecy out of the shadows and really show how we are, how we, how we can open ourselves to heal. Right, and that's so powerful. And to give people context, so you're from Peru, you ended up really relocating to the United States, having a very successful, high power, high stress job, Silicon Valley, um, eBay, correct? And then all of a sudden, you know, you realized that there, you know, there was a point when you said, okay, enough is enough, I have to just, um, you know, I need, I need more out of my life. And I know you were struggling with addiction and I know you were struggling with coming out. So I think when I hear these stories, so many people in our community, the, the, um, the themes of struggling with self-acceptance and struggling to come out do so many times go hand in hand with addiction. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's a really important conversation to have for our community. So tell me a little bit about that and then how you ended up, you know, really getting to be on the other side of it and literally, figuratively and literally climbing mountains. Yes. And, and thank you for bringing this up. I mean, I mean, part of part of what it is an honor to be speaking with GLAD and all the work that, you know, that GLAD does for our community is still, you know, I mean, our acceptance worldwide is limited. Mm -hmm. And and so for me personally, you know, growing up, especially my mother, and people will be able to see that in the book, you know, really just have, you know, was homophobe. And she would be like, you know, gay men, maybe, but even lesbians, oh my God, that would be like the worst thing. And so, you know, and you don't want to disappoint your parents. And yet when I started realizing that, wow, I mean, I think I'm, I'm gay. I, I mean, I actually, and I have a very funny scene in the book. Um, I was scheduled to move to New York City after college. I was having this kind of my very first relationship in, in, at the university. And we had decided like, ah, let's move to New York after. And I came to say goodbye to my family who was living in San Francisco. And it was during gay pride. And I saw gay pride out loud, proud, and that convinced me. I'm like, I need to be where that is. Yeah. And so I forgo. I mean, if I would have seen gay pride in New York City, who knows? I mean, I think it was a different day, but it literally, it it just what what really stood out for me was a sense of inclusion, mm -hmm. and and so that was kind of exploration. But because my family wasn't supportive at the time, um, you know, it it started. I mean, I won't, I won't say that I became an alcoholic because I was gay. I think the trauma of my experience was catching up to me, like the trauma of my abuse. And I started finding solace in drinking. 
And, and so then, you know, when my family wasn't being accepting, I think it also kind of was like, well, you know, if I want to explore this double life and secrecy in order for me to give myself strength, would they continue drinking? And so, you know, at one point, kind of hiding who I was and really not being open to deal with my trauma is what led me to a self-destructive path. And it also didn't help that I was working for an alcohol company. I was working for Sky Vodka, which became Campari. So, I mean, when you add all those different elements, you know, I had, I, I became my own self-destructive force. And it was until I hit rock bottom, I, you know, and I talk openly in the book, I was even arrested, DUI, sent to jail. That wasn't stopping me. It was when my youngest brother found me kind of drowning on my own puke at the start, at, at the entrance of my home, that that was the biggest shame to have my family witnessing me uh, because everything else, I was able to control it. I had my, you know, double personality. And that's when I asked for help. I asked my mother, you know, I need help. And she had me going down to Peru and we did a powerful healing session of ayahuasca. And it was on that session that I saw my little inner girl who unfortunately had to endure so much of the abuse. And then I saw myself as an adult and we reconnected. And on that moment, we became whole. Mm -hmm. And that actually, and I, I will never forget just the, the emotion and the feeling. And, as, and as, as that was happening, there was a rumbling and mountains formed around us. And then my little girl pulled my hand and started me taking me walking into mountains. So that is what really started me on this journey. It wasn't that, oh, I was doing this when I was young. No, it was just simply this vision. And so I decided to put that into practice. And I'm like, well, I need to bring this massive pain. Why don't I walk to the tallest mountain in the world? And so that's when I took myself without any experience to walk to the base of Mount Everest. That is, it's such an incredible story. Um, and, you know, I think with um, Latin culture specifically, when it comes to acceptance for LGBTQ people, there's still so much um, work that can be done, conversations that can be had. How did you end up, you know, you mentioned that point in your life, hitting rock bottom, coming back to Peru. Obviously you said you with your mother, how did you reconcile and get to a place where the two of you were able to talk about, you know, you being, you know, a gay woman and wanting to just kind of not be, hide that part of you anymore? You know, I think I started taking control of my life, you know, with its proper setbacks. I mean, you know, I still was dealing with my addiction, but I, you know, I went through points that, um, you know, things felt control. And, and actually, it'll be unique. I mean, as readers will get into, into the book that, you know, I kind of, you can see the timeline, you know, would mm -hmm. be good days, good years, bad years. Mm -hmm. um, I think ultimately my mother tried really hard, uh, you know, to, to accept me as, as to who I was. I'm not going to give it too much away in the book, but there is a really difficult episode of, of a very big loss that it was almost a catalyst that, you know, my mother kind of was undermining my relationship and I decided to cut off, you know, our, our communication because I felt like, listen, if you are not able to accept me when I am going through one of my, my most challenging times, you know, I'm sorry, I need to really kind of embrace myself. And, and you know, I think that moment possibly was pivotal for her to see, to really just, you know, I mean, we, we went about a year without speaking with each other. And after that, it was almost like, okay, well, let me try accepting you. Yet, you know, she tried her best, uh, but it was really funny how after my mother passed away, I was doing my coming out at her funeral because as I was meeting people, they were like, I didn't know you're gay. I'm like, oh, my partner is here. Right. But you know, it was a relationship that also, I mean, she did the best that she could. And, and I have a beautiful scene in the book in, while I'm you know, climbing Everest, one of, my team, one of my teammates is able to share his own experience and it's very moving. Um, and so, you know, even though let's say my, my family and my parents were not as accepting, you know, it still is a powerful message. And I, and I think, you know, it's something that, you know, drives me to be able to bring it to the forefront for many people. Um, but, you know, and I think for those of us who don't feel that our parents are willing to embrace us. That's what we're here for as a community. You know, I am happy to give you a big hug and to be like, okay, let me be your adoptive mother. I mean, but you know, yeah, maybe physically you might not have her 
accepting you, but there are so many of us who are really to step in the role and because you're loved and yeah. you, know, you need to be who you are. And that's really, you know, what chosen family is all about. Um, you know, I've talked to so many people who, uh, you know, artists um, in the business or just creators who say that, you know, once they were able to really accept themselves and when they were able to come out and just be um, comfortable and to live their most authentic version of themselves, that they just really like started to thrive creatively. They got to the highest point of their career, obviously with you going, having that awakening um, once you came back to Peru and then becoming more comfortable and, you know, getting to that point of acceptance with, you know, as much as you could with your family. Do you think that that was a part of you being able to just like, you know, take on this next thing and, and literally like conquer the world? Well, <laughs> I have allergy to the work, to the work conquering, especially in mountains, because it feels like, ah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's more like inclusive. Yes. Um, I will tell you, you know, I didn't start this journey trying to become the first openly gay women. You know, if anything, I joke that I figure there was some tough butch that had done it, you know, decades ago. <laughs> I'm like, this is so hardcore. And then it was halfway along when I, you know, figure like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to become the, the first openly gay woman. I actually met the first openly gay man, Kason Crane, in one of our expeditions in Denali. And he's the one who told me like, no, you be the first openly gay woman. And I was like, oh, really me? <laughs> like, I mean, okay. And, and for me, ultimately, the recognition was an opportunity to just bring in inclusion, bring in representation. I mean, being able to inspire people who are like me. And just, just being able to actually, I don't want to be the last one. And I know I'm not. I just, I mean, you know, there is the first trans woman who is in her own journey to, you know, to complete the seven summits. She's halfway. I just recently heard from a woman in Iowa who just also, you know, completed the seven summits openly gay. So this is amazing. And so it is, it is, it's powerful to have the message. You know, it's when you look at the statistics and the percentages of people out in nature or like in outdoor sports, I mean, still our representation is minimal. But I think by bringing more of our voices, that's a way to create inclusion. And to your question, personally, for me, I think really embracing being the first openly gay women has liberated me. I mean, it fills me with pride and gives me gives me a lot of purpose and to bring this message out. So, you know, I mean, I, I keep wanted to go to Mars and do the tallest mountain in the universe. I mean, wouldn't it be amazing to, to be happy the first person and who turns to is actually gay, so, you know. I mean, that, that was, that's the next thing. Um, when, so after you, you know, you had the experience with Everest and you found yourself in this business and this world of, you know, mountain climbing and these explorations, what would, how did you find the world in terms of accepting you for, you know, both as a woman, but also as someone who was LGBTQ? I, I'll be honest, you know, I mean, it's been mixed. Uh, I actually experienced a lot of uh, racism and homophobe in, uh, in Denali, in Alaska, in one of my expeditions. I mean, it took me three times to the mountain um, and, you know, it is, I think, for most of us who, who love this adventure side, you know, we know the power of nature and we are very respectful of each other. Um, yet, you know, there are circumstances that people, you know, are very close minded. And I think it is, you know, how we're able to bridge that. I don't think it should be a deterrent. I mean, fear, you know, it, it, it is possibly kind of the biggest deterrent and, and it is actually just in our heads. Uh, but for the most part, you know, most people who are in the outdoor world tend to be supportive because they know nature doesn't discriminate. Um, and so, you know, I've gone through the experiences, but, you know, I'm always here to be a guide to anybody who's interested to, you know, be able to point them into the best community, how to join. So to know that they're not alone if they want to, you know, get more into it. Um, you know, there are different organizations that, that are, that are you know, that, that keep developing more in the outdoor industry for LGBTQIA+. So it's more of us kind of, you know, being able to, to get out there, to feel the power, to just see everything that we're going to gain by being in nature. And it is so transformative. I mean, it just can only makes us, you know, stronger. I love that. I know. I, and it's, I think nature, I mean, I, I, I've never thought of, you know, doing the things that you have done, but I did actually at the beginning of the year say, I need to be more in tune. I want to be outside more. I need to just be a little bit, 
not, you know, it's it's so easy, especially now everyone's working from home just to be in your house all day long and never actually like step out and breathe the fresh air. So it's a good reminder. I mean, Um, you forget, and I was quickly going to say, I mean, and you were just based on what you just said. I mean, I feel in the pandemic, you know, we all have been on this box, Mm -hmm. you know, and we all have adapted and we all have made the best out of it. But the beauty about putting yourself in nature and especially when an obstructed views, you're going to get, besides any beautiful healing, you're also going to get all. And awe is so powerful as inspirational. And it can just, you know, feed you with anything you want. And, and that is that is something massive that usually you don't get all, you know, when we're in our little boxes. So that's another yeah. beautiful plus. So this book, you know, your memoir has just come out a couple of weeks ago. But prior to that, long before it was even published, Selena Gomez, you know, you basically came on board and said, I want to play you in this story. I want it to be a film. Tell me about that process because I think when it comes to strong, you know, young Latina women, I mean, Selena Gomez, I mean, can't get much bigger and better than that, right? Yes, it is a true dream come true, to be honest. I mean, I, I joke, it's my gay Cinderella moment, like, oh my God, <laughs> yeah, this is incredible. Um, but, you know, she express interest from the very beginning. And, you know, I am a huge fan. I'm an admirer of all the work that she has done for the community. I mean, even herself, you know, as not just as a pop star queen, but, you know, just as a vulnerable, driven entrepreneur. I mean, with her beautiful makeup line, I mean, just even putting her own struggles with, you know, mental health to the forefront and being as open as vulnerable. I mean, that takes a lot of guts. And, you know, so I, I mean, to me, it is an honor because, you know, this story is a powerful story about inclusion, but it's also a powerful story about healing. And, and you know, what, a, what an amazing person to have in representation. Um, you know, and what I'm excited is that, you know, the movie won't be just about me, you know, there's gonna be a cast and I can't wait. I mean, I'm one of the executive producers and I cannot wait to be able to have this cast being so representative. I mean, yes. wouldn't it be great to have, you know, my father, who my father and my mother being played by, you know, an openly LGBTQIA character, like actor. I mean, I think that would be yeah. fantastic. So, so it is a beauty that, you know, we're all committed in to be able to bring, you know, a cast that it is representative as, as the way that my own story is. Where are we at in the process? Because I know, I, I mean, I, it, it's got to be probably a long process, but have we, you know, you're, you said you're st- still casting and all that. So what do we think is the, the, the game plan to get that film created? Yeah, we still have a little bit of a long way. I mean, it's a long book. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you a little tidbit, I mean, that, that I learned myself. So, you know, the book is 306 pages. A script for a film is 100 pages. So it's a third of the book. <laughs> And I know, I mean, and I was editing the book until last October, November. So like the final product literally was just done end of last year. And so Elgin is hard at work. I mean, he's been, you know, trying to figure it out in the script. And hopefully we can we can share some news in the next couple of months. I mean, I know we are, you know, in terms of the process, the script is first, and then, you know, we have to sell it to studio. Um, you know, but we are all committed. Uh, so I know it'll, it'll take a little bit of time, but also, you know, it's such an opportunity, you know, as, as, as you were mentioning, you know, as a Latina character who is doing something amazing, healing and empowering as a powerful message of inclusion, you know, it's not something that, okay, you know what, let's do this right away. I and mean, right. we want to make sure that we have something that is lasting, that it is inspiring, that it is moving. So you know, so we want to make it, we want to do it right. And I know now that the book is out, people can see the story. It would be amazing to like, I would love to hear from readers, like, you know, what scene that really jumps to them and they would feel like, oh my God, this is so cinematic. I mean, the book on its own, I mean, it's, you're, you're talking to go to the mother of the world. It's incredibly cinematic, but it would be fun to hear from readers, like, you know, what they would want to see. Well, you know what? Put, put it in the comments, everyone. If you've, if you've read the book, or if you're reading the book and there's something that you think would be oh, yeah. a really impactful part, let us know. I mean, we'll, this will be up on our on all of our channels. Um, what What is next for you? I mean, obviously the film is next, but I mean, I feel like, 
you know, letting the world in on your story with this book has got to have been an amazing process, but probably a very um, deep one. But um, what do you want to do next? Definitely go to Mars. Uh, I mean, I'm putting it out <laughs> I there. It. I mean, I would love to bring my big, it would be amazing to get on a pink uh, uh, space shift or like just have the flags. I mean, I think they would be epic. But more realistic, you know, at least space. Um, but personally, for me, I am supposed to be heading to the North Pole in April. Uh, you okay. know, it's managed by the Russians, but, you know, we've seen some of the political instability over there. So we're, we're hearing that. I am in conversations, you know, to also figure out, you know, next steps for me to get more of a public uh, role. I mean, right now we also with so many uh, streamers, there's opportunity to, you know, trying to see, okay, well, can we develop a TV show or something? So we're just early talks on a lot of these different things. Um, you know, I call myself a messenger of the mountain. So whatever platform I can get to try to bring, you know, as many, especially in my community, because we are fierce, we just have so much strength inside of us, um, you know, it is exciting. So, so I like to be a little bit busy, uh, you know, things are opening up. So starting some of the book tours, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm committed to, to this beautiful platform and yeah, I'm just here to convince and to bring as many, you know, loud or proud over. Listen, however you need us, we can help you. We are here to support. I would love to see you in every sort of media, film, television. We got the book and beyond. Um, but everyone, just a reminder, in the shadow of the mountain, right here, everyone, uh, you can get your copy. It's available right now. You can buy it online. You can, you know. Um, bookstores, I, I mean, local bookstores have it. I know. We love that. We love to support the local bookstores. And I, you know what? I still do love to, like, read not, I mean, it's great to listen to them too, audio, but I think I love to just kind of have the actual book in hand. Um, yes. But Sylvia, you're such an inspiration. Thank you so much for the time. Um, and hopefully we'll see you in Mars in April or something like that. <laughs> no, 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 North Pole in April. That's right. Yeah. But thank you, Anthony. And thank you, Glad, for all the support. Thank you for all the hard work that you're doing. And, you know, I am here to be in service in any way. Thank you.